Hi, Randy K7AGE. I progressed a little bit since my last video. I've mounted uh, a bunch of the components here on a uh, piece of wood inspired by Bob Heil's pine board transmitter project. So I have the terminal strip that I completed in the previous video mounted on the, the board here along with a couple SO239 connectors mounting with just uh, some heavy wire and some wood screws. Not very fancy. And the RF passes through the toroid down through this log and out to this other connector. So that's the pass through for the RF. Um, this terminal strip here has some couple parts on there to deal with the SWR switching. We'll get to that a little bit later. And on the front here, I have the one milliamp meter also mounted with some heavy wire and a couple of wood screws. Not very fancy. So a review of the schematic, the RF power comes from the transmitter through the uh, one side of this toroid and loops out to the antenna or the load. It's also coupled with the second toroid to ground and off the secondaries of both these toroids is the sensor for the forward and the sensor for the reverse. Now these are exactly the same and it doesn't really matter if the RF is going from the antenna to the transmitter or from the transmitter to the antenna. If we can feed in one and terminate on the other we'll get a voltage. If we reverse this around, we should get the same voltage on the other terminal and that'll tell us that this is balanced. So let's test that. So here's my test setup. I have my FT817 as my signal source. I have it connected to what I've identified as the transmitter terminal. The RF passes through and I have a Tektronix 50 ohm 5 watt termination on, on the antenna connector. So I have the voltmeter connected to the diode here, and I'm going to measure the voltage at the half, one, two and a half, and five watts coming out of the radio. I will then reverse the connectors, move the meter over to the reverse diode, and repeat the measurements, and hopefully they'll come out close. Half watt, 0 0.52. One watt, 0 0.80. 2.5 watts, 1.35. Five watts, 1.97. Reverse the connections. Move the meter, half watt, 0 0.55, 1 watt, 0 0.82, 2.5 watts, 1.38, 5 watts, 2.01, 0. So what this tells me is that the bridge is fairly well balanced. Uh, we're seeing slight discrepancies of 20 to 30 millivolts in the forward and reverse uh, range, depending on the direction of RF, but I think for what I'm building here, this will be good enough and it helps simplify the circuitry needed to turn this now into an SWR meter. So let's take a quick look at a commercial SWR meter to see how that works. So I have my Diamond SX600 SWR power meter. This is kind of nice because it has two sensors, one uh, for HF and another one um, optimized for UHF, VHF. One of the things I don't like is that the switch is on the back to go between the two. Should have been on the front. Anyway, to do an SWR measurement, I have my um, 50 ohm load connected to the back of the meter here. And the first thing you do is you put the, uh, quite often you'll have a, a switch to go between cal and SWR. So you put it in the cal position and you adjust the knob here. And you see up at the top it says cal. So you adjust that for full scale and then go to SWR. You can see the meter isn't moving, so my SWR is one to one. So that's what I would expect with a good, good termination and a good uh, meter. So what happens if I connect another load? Uh, these pass through, so it's 50 ohms to ground. I put a second one on, it'll be 25 ohms. Okay, so I go into cal position. I set this basically for full scale, change it to SWR, and there it is at two to one which is what I expect. Let's go back to the board. So to turn this into an SWR meter, I basically have a single pole double throw switch so I can select the meter to measure either the forward and also the reverse voltages coming out of the, the sensor here. In series with the meter is a 10K pot and the meter is tied to ground. So to use this, you flip the switch up to the forward key the transmitter, adjust the pot for full scale, flip the switch to reverse, and get a meter reading that we can use to determine our SWR. So how did I figure out the value for this pot? Use a little bit of Ohm's Law. So we'll go back to the table here, and you can see that the maximum forward voltage was about 2 volts with 5 watts. 
So to find resistance using Ohm's law, so R is equal to V over I. So R is going to equal to 2 volts over, it's a 0 0.0101, sorry, milliamp meter. And that makes R going to equal to 2,000 ohms. So by using a 10K pot, I have range for higher power. And also in the QRP range, I have enough range in the pot in order to set it. So here's the switch. It's connected to each diode. The center position goes through the pot to the plus terminal on the meter. Negative terminal goes to ground. If I move the switch to the right, I can adjust the pot for full scale, move the switch to the left, and get a meter reading to determine SWR. So let's see if this works. I'm going to switch the switch to the front for calibrate, key up, adjust the meter for full scale, switch it to SWR, and you can see the meter just barely moves. So I'm now going to connect this termination in series with the other one so we get an SWR reading. So I adjust the calibrate for full scale, get that straight on the one, change the switch to reverse, and I measure 0.32. But what SWR is that? So to figure out the SWR, we use the two meter readings that we measured. So SWR will be equal to the forward plus the reverse reading divided by the forward minus the reverse reading. So that's going to equal to 1 plus the 0.32 divided by 1 minus the 0.32. So I programmed this formula into a little spreadsheet on my on my phone. So I'm going to enter in uh, 0.32 for the reverse and it tells me the SWR is 1.94, which is basically 2 to 1, which is what I measured on my diamond meter. So that formula works. So even though I don't have an SWR scale on the meter, I now know that 0.3 is 2 to 1, which is good. And I know I played with this that if I um, have a meter reading of, of 0.5, I have an SWR of 3 to 1. So 3 to 1 and under is typically where we want to be. So I know if I'm half scale or down, my transmitter should be happy. Uh, 0.3 is SWR 2 to 1. 0.5 is an SWR 3 to 1. So let's check the SWR for various bands with the 50 ohm termination. 3.7 megahertz. 7.15 megahertz, 14.2 megahertz, 21.2, 28.45. So I think this wraps up my SWR meter project. This is the first time I built an SWR meter using a couple toroids. Uh, I think it worked quite well considering the building techniques. Everything's kind of out in the open, long leads, didn't really uh, pay a lot of attention to it. And you can see the SWR of the meter itself rises as you approach 10 meters. But um, now you know what's inside one of these, these things. And I uh, have a better appreciation. And if you've got some parts laying around, you may want to put this together and uh, learn about an SWR meter. So thanks for watching. This is Randy, K7AGE.